Hi, this is Connie Cleveland. Last weekend I had the opportunity to show M in Utility for the first time and she failed, but I want to take this opportunity to show you a perfect example of Hernstein's matching law. That law states that when there are multiple behaviors available to an animal, they will distribute their efforts in direct proportion to the reinforcement history. What in the world does that mean? Well, there are multiple behaviors in the ring that this dog has been reinforced for. One of the behaviors is going out to the stanchion. If you have seen the last webinar, What Makes a Dog Want to Perform, you may remember that this is the dog that ran out to go out, stood looking at the stanchion, and when she heard the reward marker, had a powerful reaction and returned to me to get her bumper, which is the most important reward that I can possibly present to her. So Hernstein's matching law talks about a dog distributing efforts in proportion to their reinforcement history. We have to remember that her reinforcement history on the go out exercise is very, very large. So this was the reverse order where go outs were first. So she starts by doing two go outs down the center of the ring. The next exercise was the moving stand. This was intentional that I circled to the right to start. I wanted to make sure she knew we were healing. I didn't want her to expect to do a third go out. So I just did that little circle of healing. But again, we are moving right down the middle of the ring and completing the moving stand exercise. Her finish on this moving stand is pretty obviously crooked from the front, so I ask her to fix it after the judge tells me exercise finish. I was hoping that I would give her the message that she needed to tuck her butt in on the remainder of the finishes. The third exercise is the directed retrieve, and today is glove two, so once again she's moving down the center of the ring. So just keep in mind, this is her fourth trip up and down the center of this ring, and a perfect storm is developing. Take it. The next exercise is articles, and I do a couple things here that I want you to watch. First, I know that I have the signal exercise coming, and so I choose to heal all the way to articles as kind of a warm-up for that healing exercise. The next thing is that I really kind of struggle to get her to look at the steward putting out the articles. She's looking right and left, but not really concentrating on the fact that he's putting her articles on the ground. Additionally, the articles felt too close to me, so I asked the judge if I could back up a little bit. He said yes, and then he paced off that distance and decided that they were in fact too close. So he and the steward go ahead and move them further away. Yeah. of this is taking up time. I do want you to pay attention to how long I try to keep M sitting and paying attention to me. It's a skill I work on. I mark and pay sitting and paying attention to me a lot, trying to get to a time of 12 to 15 seconds. Hey, now you're going to see a demonstration of Hernstein's matching law. When there are multiple behaviors available to a dog, they will distribute their efforts in direct proportion to the reinforcement history. So what behavior is the most exciting thing that's been reinforced and reinforced most often? and that would be the go out. We've gone up and down the ring how many times and there she goes to mark the stanchion and all I said to her was come on Em come find it and she came back across the ring looked at the article pile worked the articles and brought the right one in to me. Interestingly as you think about this what is the reinforcement history for going to the article pile? Really there is none. 
I have certainly reinforced her lots of times for bringing me the right article, but what's the motivation to get to the article pile? For M, it certainly does not compare to the motivation she has to get to go out. The reason I refer to that as a perfect storm is that she had been up and down the middle of the ring four times and it led to the most reinforced behavior for her in her utility performance. Now the judge asked me if I wanted to do a fix and go and when I said no, he said, well don't you like the fix and go? And I said, well yeah, I love the fix and go, but I think I already fixed it. And he said, really, how? So a little review, I believe M made an effort error and I was able to help her do the right thing. I think dogs want to do the right thing, witnessed by the fact that she was perfectly willing to go to the article pile on the second article. So that's how she failed utility on Saturday. I had the same judge on Sunday, so I was fairly confident that the ring would be set up the same way and I would be doing articles across the ring again with go outs to the left. I have limited space at home to train, but I set this up in the driveway. I managed to get 40 feet of gate across the driveway. My jumps are 18 feet apart. And I put out a mat to stand to send her to the scent articles. And then I have another mat where the articles are. If you look closely, you can see that I do have subtle guides out at go out. I started by doing two go outs and each jump one time. And then I did two articles to a small pile of articles. I wasn't concerned about how many articles were in the pile. She didn't have any problem. So the next thing I did was come up to the middle of the ring and do glove three. And then I left glove three out in the corner of the ring to come back and try articles again. Sure enough, on the first two sends to the articles, she went directly back to the glove. And I used a simple rule to train by. I told her she was wrong, brought her back to heel position, and helped her perform the direct send correctly. This story has a very happy ending. She got her first utility leg on Sunday with a 198 and a half. And I am deciding how I am going to increase her reinforcement history, both on marking the articles as they're being put down and on going directly to the article pile. I'll be reporting back to you on that.